pigeons are hitting the spring drillings and crow is going ape. I'm getting awfully close to a very shootable roebuck. News leads on poaching, we've got young shots in hunting YouTube and there's plenty of pest control in Hello Charlie. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Crow's anger management sessions are going well, and he's finding all sorts of ways of expressing his inner gorilla. When he's not attacking foliage with his chopper, he's climbing it, not because he can, but because it's going to attract the passing pigeons. When should you use pigeon decoys in a tree, Crow? Uh, when there ain't no leaves on it. Brilliant, thanks for that. When do you use lofters in a tree? Well, I use them all the way through the winter. It always helps out if the pigeons are passing, it just draws them in a bit, draws their attention. They see that, see the decoy, so it always helps. Um, today, they've been, like I say, they've been feeding on the drilling just over the back here, so I want to try every, every way I can to try and pull them this way. So, um, so if, if it means putting half a dozen up in the top of a tree to help things along, I'm going to. So. These are high poles that have come from UK shoot warehouse, they sent them to me. They work well as it goes. They're a bit stronger than normal ones and they're not so whippy when they're up in the tree because it's always hard to get them to hook where you want them. When you're up there, it's like a, like a fishing rod, so. But no, so these are, these are a bit more rigid. All this time and effort is all to do with crop protection and pest control. So why are we on a cut maize cover crop which has already had its day? I've done a bit of spring drilling up over the top of the, or just over the back of the hedge here. The pigeons have been feeding on the spring drilling and on this maize cover crop which was topped probably a fortnight ago. It's been shot a couple of times. The lads have had, a, the beaters have had a few good days on it so they've had a bit of fun. I come and watched it the other day and there was a bit of a flight line coming from the spring drilling. They come down this uh, avenue of trees and they cut through a gap here. The wind's not ideal today, burst in their face but it's not the end of the world. At least it's not sunny, otherwise we'd be facing the sun all day, so. Uh, if, you look, if you come here and look now, you think, it's not worth setting up here. There's not a pigeon here. There weren't many here when we got here, but they don't usually feed on the maize till late anyway. Right, so we have everything where it needs to be, but no pigeons. It's unnerving. Normally you would get a hint that it is worth sticking around, but not yet. Instead, we cover some outstanding business, such as Crow's new clear pigeon shell. Where is it? And Crow's young fox red lab, Rosa. How is she shaping up? Yeah, she's covering it on a right as it goes. She's very different from Ruby. Oh, no comparison, really. Totally different dog. Chilled out in the hide. She's not bothered at all. As soon as you get her out of the hide, she's straight on it. She's got a brilliant nose. But no, she's only, well, she was a year old this week, so. Get on, get on, get on. She's retrieving in, in standing wheat. Some of our wheat's probably foot 18 inches. Come here, come here. Come here. Um, come here. I shot some pigeons the other day, just flighting, just, just with her, playing with her, really. And I shot some, and she worked, 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 worked and worked until she found them. But no, she's, she's coming on really well. Really happy with her. Where's the uh, crow powered clear pigeon then? It is coming. I spoke to Game Boy yesterday. Um, they're just in the process of sorting it out now. I will be on the phone again. Keep chasing them up. Um, I was just using the last couple of boxes of my Tesco, which is uh, once they're gone, I, sh I should be straight on the phone and chase them up a bit on, on Monday. So. Well, it won't be Monday, it's Bangalore, so it'll be Tuesday. So. But as far as I know, within the next, by the end of, uh, end of the month, they're saying at the moment. <laughs> OK, the shells are coming and Rosa is coming on. Now all we need are some pigeons coming to the decoys, on Boreal or on Terra Firma. Oh, yeah. 
boys are working in the tree then. Yeah, they're working in the tree. I left that one so you can see that it, how they come to it. And Matt just down the way, he had a shot and pigeon went out the other way, so I couldn't get on it. But I hope be there another day, won't it? Probably come back in a minute. No, I'm glad we stuck, stuck it out. There was a time there, it didn't look very good. But I didn't expect them to come later. Plus, uh, Les put a banger out on another bit of maze that they were on, on and another bit of drilling they were on, and it's, it's kept them moving. The wind got up, and then they've been flying pretty, pretty fast as they've been coming through. I've had some nice shots. One or two silly misses, but hey ho. He said it would be late, and he was right. We get plenty of shots on the shot cam. We thought it might be interesting to try and judge just how much lead Crow is giving for birds at a certain range. We will try and do this more scientifically next time, but if we use bird lengths as our scale, it does appear that over a range of 25 to 50 yards, which is where Andy is shooting most of his birds, there are between two and six bird lengths of lead. Other factors will come into play, such as the speed of the pigeons and the gun and angle, but it shows that at no point was Crow's barrel pointing at the bird. Leaving the target is difficult for anyone starting to shoot with a shotgun, but if you don't, your family will starve and the pigeons will mock you. Maybe not, but you get the point. So back to Crow's maze day, and it's finally good, despite some doubting Thomases and doubting Davids. Moment now, even I was worried, but the thing is with maze, if they've been pressured a bit, they don't feed, feed till late. They know they can come here and top up a bit quick. So there's nothing in the crop at the moment? Not a single, not a single grain in any of them, whether it be sun corn or anything, or, or clover, they've got nothing in them at all. But at the time now it's back half oh, par five, quarter to six. There's still odd ones going about, so. Crow has held his nerve and found the force. With a bag of 67 and a crow, it isn't half bad, and if he can't be bothered climbing back up the tree for those deeks, he can always go all King Kong crow on us and pound the ground and rattle them from the branches. Well done, Andy. You can take the man out of the playground, you can't take the playground out of the man. Now another man I found leaping from tree to tree, but I've civilised him. It's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. BBC presenter and bird rights activist Chris Packham is appearing in court in Malta, charged with assaulting bird trappers. Packham posted a video on Twitter saying he'd been charged with using force against any person with the intention to insult or hurt them and is due in court on the 20th of April 2017. Well, I'm completely innocent of these charges. Not only was I the victim of being pushed and jostled around, I was also then pushed all the way up the street by a policeman. Malta. I wonder what the courts would be like. He is on the island of Gozo, campaigning about the spring hunt, which this year shooters have voluntarily restricted to quail only. No turtle doves. During the short season, the island's 15,000 hunters recorded a bag of just 15 birds. What's your favourite hunting film? Well, the QEU Film Festival is underway, with voting in six categories until the end of April. The US clothing company will announce the winners on the 5th of May. If you like American hunting, almost all the entries are from North America, visit filmfest.qeu.com for a good night's telly. Officials across the world are getting tougher on rhino poachers. Assam Forest Department guards killed two poachers in Rajiv Gandhi Orang National Park last week. Meanwhile, South Africa National Parks shot a poacher dead in the Kruger and issued a denial that a recently discovered mass grave contained the bodies of poachers it has shot in the past few years. A Facebook post has led to two convictions for poaching in the USA. 
David Maxfield Jr. and Alan Bowl from Oregon, USA have lost their hunting privileges for the next three years and must pay $7,600 in fines after posting pictures of animals they poached online. And finally, here's an example of what the female shooting group Femme Fatale get up to when they're not holding a shotgun. Here's one of their number, stunt woman Amanda Foster in a new advert for number seven makeup. I've never been the right age to jump out of a building. And here she is competing in the recent Dartford shooting grounds floodlit event we filmed a few weeks ago. Glamour all the way. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now let's see what you lot have been up to. It is Hello Charlie. It's spring again and you might be able to hear the lambs bleating away in the background so I'm out trying to control the hood of crows and I haven't done too bad this morning with the gold MFR. Enjoying airheads and field sports sprinting so keep her lit you boy. Hello Charlie, uh, doing a bit of pest control out the wood and shot six jackdaws, cheers. Hello Charlie, it's Scotty here, doing a bit of pest control out in Dromore County Down. Hello Charlie, it's Finny from Essex here. Today I've been shooting pigeons over drilled peas. Uh, we've had a really enjoyable afternoon shooting pigeons. Uh, keep hunting, keep shooting, it's better than any day at school. That's it, please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Thank you for those, please keep them coming. Next up, I encounter something a bit like Roebuck Chowder. At this time of year in my part of Somerset, with the season recently underway, there are roebucks everywhere. Oh my God, there's one right behind you. I can't believe it. Turn around. There is one right behind me, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like buck soup around it here, isn't is, it? It is, yes. There is a lot of, uh, of roe deer around here, yes. If, if we've just come to the end of the lambing season and if you're you know, out early morning and got the rifle over your shoulder and you can and pick, pick off a fox, that's great. And if, if there's the opportunity of a roebuck, then, you know, fantastic. It's great sport and, you know, it doesn't hurt just to cull out a few roebuck. Ashley is my neighbour. He farms sheep and tourists with some impressive holiday lets on his land. He hunts with the Blackmore Vale. This morning I join him on his early morning nature walk. Well, I, I got up uh, just as it was coming light and went out on the yard and fed the horses as normal. And I had the rifle over my shoulder uh, and I was walking around the ewes and lambs um, and everything seemed quiet there. Sheep and deer don't tend to mix in the same field, but one little buck is a lot closer to the sheep than we expect, and we spook it. We think that that's the last we'll see of it, but it isn't. And as I walked up over the, uh, the brow of the hill, I just popped around the hedge, and there was a roebuck happily grazing away. He made his way up through uh, the tree line <clears throat> um, and completely ignored me. I think he'd forgotten all about me, put his head down grazing. And uh, just as he just as he walked uh, to the left towards the hedge towards the high trees, I was he was in perfect uh, perfect line of sight. So uh, pop and down he went, and uh, yeah, fantastic. Plenty of room in the freezer. The shot is good. Ashley is using the Browning X Bolt in 308 and a Kite 1.6 to 10 by 42 scope. We see plenty on this walk around. There are other deer on the edge of the woods. It's a perfect picture of the English countryside, but would it be there if the anties had their way and banned us from eating meat? The deer are abundant in numbers. I mean, there's, you know, there, there is huge amounts of them. Um, and, you know, I don't think it at all hurts to, to, to cull out the bucks at this time of year because they, they, there's plenty of them. In terms of sheep farming, um, you know, if, if you want to see England's green and pleasant land, then we've got to manage the grassland and the best way to do that is, is in this particular part of the country is, is to use sheep. And, and the man that's sat there reading his guardian, when his, when his tummy becomes empty, he'll soon start grumbling. You know, we're custodians of the land, which has to be managed, and, and we have some sort of duty to produce food for the nation. Good point well made by Ashley there. 
from Somerset to the wider world of hunting and shooting now, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Stanislas Volkert is a 17-year-old hunter from Belgium, and this is a video he sends me about him bow hunting wild boar in Spain. He tries stalking them, but the weather is too hot, so he sets up in a high seat. Another young man going on a dream hunt is filmmaker Sam Cosman. He gets sponsorship from Red Bull to go to Mongolia to train with an eagle master. And more young hunters in this film by Jonathan McGee, who joins a Basque Young Shots team pheasant shooting in Lancashire. Hunting seasons are getting underway down under. Clark Boys Hunting NZ record there. Duck Hunting opening weekend 2016. They may have got the date wrong. Another Kiwi hunting channel, Clay Tall Stories, is hitting the road and heading south to meet up with Simon, Cam and TJ for another adventure in wild New Zealand after chamois. Over the sea in Australia, Aussie Bush Harvest is on a red deer hunt. Empty freezers need filling, so he's driven outdoors after hearing roaring from the stags. From big red stags in Australia to thrushes in Italy, the Nina Kjant guys are using 410s in January to walk up birds in the olive groves. And finally, here is a big fat thank you to you from Idaho Fish and Game Department for all those hunters and anglers enjoying their sport in the state. The Idaho Fish Game Channel puts out a film called Economic Benefits of Hunting and Fishing which has some interesting numbers about how much cash we shooters shell out. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the link if you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the Weekly Top 8. Email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv well, we are back next week. If you haven't done so already, please go over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, or best of all, pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show and our other shows. This show is Field Sports Britain. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. Goodbye.